turkeys are back. Well, I've had a lot of maintenance items piling up just because I had to order parts and stuff. So hopefully I can start getting that knocked out. I'm going to start with the one of the mowers. Uh, the pulley tension spring broke. So I needed to buy a new one of those and put that on. For the other mower, of course, flat tire, which I thought was the stem, the valve, uh, uh, the valve stem, which was not actually the problem. All it was, but it was an inner tube. So I needed to get a new inner tube. So I ordered those, those have come in. And then of course on the mule, I needed new filters for the, uh, for the fuel pump assembly. And uh, those have come in. So I'm gonna start reassembling some stuff and see if I can uh, get all the vehicles back up and running. Low hanging fruit first, I think. So this spring broke, it's the other half of it. And it connects to this ten, this uh, this pulley in here. See this one that's kind of swinging around here. So I need to replace that, put that back on there. And then uh, hopefully that's quick and I can move on to the next project. All right, that's good. It's on there. Good tension on the belt. Well, not on that part, but over here, yeah. Yeah, it was low hanging fruit, but that was still harder than I thought it was gonna be to get that on there. <laughs> okay, but it's done. Next is the fuel pump. Yeah, right, because I know I'm not gonna have any luck getting the bead off the tire to break that bead. I'm dreading that. I've tried that for like two days. I can't get it. So we'll move on to the fuel pump. Uh, this is what the filter looks like. And it goes at the bottom of the uh, fuel pump assembly housing. And then that little cup goes over it. And the whole thing reassembles and goes down in there. And this should stop debris from coming in. Uh, let's turn it on and see if we got power. All right. Pump pumped. Everything's primed. All right, so it started, but I've still got the DFI light on the dashboard. So I've got fuel, I've got air, now I need fire. So that means that I'm back here at the spark plugs and the coils. Um, I pulled the back spark plug, right there, I pulled that cover, the engine died. I started it up again, I pulled the front, and it actually smoothed out a little bit. So my problem is on this side uh, for spark. All right, I pulled the plug. The plug looks pretty good, um, and it's gapped properly up here, so uh, I think I gotta look deeper. All right, so next step will be to change the coil, which is this piece right here. So I've seen some things online where they say that that's usually their go-to answer. Uh, that means I got to order it. So more delays on getting the mule running. On the upside, I just made a quick run out. I bought some new plugs, so I'll change the plugs on this anyway. Um, the plugs that were in there were not the specifications of Kawasaki, who says it was should have been a uh, BPR 2 ES, and what there was in there was a BPR 5 ES. And I was told that the difference is, is that the higher number means a cooler burn. So it's not burning everything as completely um, in the chamber. So it could leave some residue and whatnot. So I got the specs, uh, the, right, the right spark plugs uh, that are specified in the owner's manual. And so I'll swap out both of them for that. And All right, the mule is still down. I'm still waiting on the ignition coil uh, to come in. So I still need to take some equipment out closer to the woods um, where I'm gonna be cutting down some trees, so I'm gonna need a way to get them out there. That plus that equals that. Works just fine. It's not as fast, and in the rough stuff out here, I really can't drive through that with the mower. It doesn't have the clearance, 
uh, and I don't need to tear it up for that. But you know, it's it's more than just tractors and mules, right? So uh, I think Justin Rhodes says, uh, you know, you don't don't need to get a tractor or a mule right off. If you get a mower with a good strong engine and one of these little trailers, you can you can do most everything, uh, except for like the heavy lifting and I guess anything that requires high speeds. That yeah, works good though. All right, here's the corner closest to the drive. And so I've got the chainsaw and I'm gonna just start clearing out these small kinds of trees here, like here and right there and you know, whatever further down the line. So I can get in there and use the rotary cutter to try and open this stuff up more so I can get a clear line from one end to the other. Seems like it's gonna be a lot, but it's what I gotta do. So I guess I better get after it. <laughs> Okay, started down at that, uh, you can see the gate, and this is where we are now. When I say we, I mean me. And then I got as far as just a little beyond the cool limb that was down. I got a little bit more to clear out over there. There's probably, probably three or four trees I need to get. I still got a little bit more of this stuff to address. There's some pieces of fence that broke that were hidden in the, the foliage and the trees, but uh, it's being revealed now. I'll have to come through, clear out some of that. This one's not on the fence line, but it's broken off at the top. And on the other side, a woodpecker is just tearing it up. So I think I'm gonna take that out anyway, because I'm gonna have to do it eventually. It looks like the last thing I'm gonna have to contend with are these trees here, and all of them are just dead on center. So one, all right, that's two, that's three, and then four is back in there. Chainsaw got uh, really hot during there, and when I, and then the chain was feeling really restricted. So I stopped, I opened it up, and it looked like the chain was off in the near the gear. It was off the. Uh, off the bar and so that's a bad thing you don't want to do that so i got to put on there hopefully i didn't do any damage but i'm going to start it up and see if i can uh, continue on this time when i looked inside i could see something different the, the teeth on the motor uh those have worn down on the inside to the point that they're just wedging uh, let me show you what I mean. Most definitely a problem. And so what happens is the chain goes closer up against like this. And then instead of being turned by these teeth, gets wedged into that gap right there like that. This presents a couple of problems, uh, not the least of which is chainsaw no work. Uh, the other problem is <laughs> I have two things that are partially cut through. This tree... And then this limb on the tree going off the other direction. And this just continues to crack ominously while I sit here. <laughs> it's pretty good size. I bet if I got out there, I could pull that down. And that would be no. I only made it kind of uglier. It's getting a lot of help from up top. So until the weight is fully gone from here, that ain't going anywhere. Just gave him a little afternoon feed so I could collect eggs. They're doing all right out here. They're actually taking down some of this tall grass. So that part on the chainsaw is called a chain sprocket. Some of you already knew that. I didn't know what the formal name of it was. So just the chain spinner thingy. So it's the chain sprocket. That goes on top of the clutch and there's a little assembly under there. But the sprocket itself is all that needs to be replaced. Uh, I found one on Amazon, but it's not gonna get here till tomorrow. So. What I'm going to do is take the tractor out tractor, and pull that stuff out of the woods, like, like pull all those logs and stuff out, see if I can clear that up by hand, see if I can pull out the remaining fencing, 
and then take a shot at, uh, you know, at least cutting the sections that I was able to open up. That's pretty good. Open up that line right here behind these trees. It's too tough to get to for the first round. But now that I got this area over here cleared, I can bring it right straight back and back it in underneath these limbs here and just give that all a good clearing. And then down the rest of the way, You can see that that opened up nicely there, so that'll be easy to manage, or should be easier to manage when I go to actually lay out the fence. I went as far as these trees because I found some more barbed wire there, so I spent some time pulling that out. And uh, I still got a couple of fence posts in here, as you can see there and there. But I'll keep that going straight straight down until I get that opened up. So that's as good a place to stop as any. I've got uh, a new, uh, well, in the next couple days, I'm expecting the ignition coil to come in for the mule so I can get that back up to speed. And then uh, tomorrow, I think I'm expecting um, a new chain sprocket for the chainsaw so I can replace that and I can finish clearing out those trees. And, uh, Meanwhile, I just feel like I just keep making, you know, burn pile after burn pile after burn pile. Yeah, it's a lot of burn piles. But that's how it goes. Little by little, it's taking shape, man. I'm really, I'm really able to see it now. And that's a good thing. So when I look down there, it's just really starting to, to come together and open up. So that being said, all I got from here. We'll talk to you guys later.